Hello and thank you for joining me. I'm Heather Forgan of StampWithNelly.com. I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator based in the UK. Yesterday I took part in the Inspire Ink blog hop with some of my Poodler's team mates and our theme for this month was Fancy Floral. So I've used the Fancy Flora um, designer series paper to decorate this fancy little box. Also used irresistible blooms, um, dies and stamps to decorate it. It's a fancy box in that it opens like so. And I've got a little bit of stamping on there. That was an afterthought and I'm going to do it as an afterthought again just to show you how I managed to do that even after I had built the box. Inside, I've got two little um, Yankee candle tea lights and close just goes over like that again. So pretty little box. Um, unusual idea. I did get this idea from a German demonstrator and I will put a link to her YouTube channel um, in the description for this video. Um, her version was a square box which looked like it was easier to do. Um, so I don't like to make my life too easy. I decided that I, I had these two tea lights sitting at the side of my desk and thought hmm I wonder if I could do a rectangular version. So I have. Okay so let's get on with it. I'm going to make exactly the same box again. So using Orchid Oasis, um, I've already gone ahead and stamped the flower from Irresistible Blooms. The leaves um, are with Soft Succulent, which is a retiring colour, I know, um, but it goes with the designer series paper. So that's why I've stuck with it. I've used I've got these two dies from Irresistible Blooms ready to cut those two flowers and I used that long die there, try and get less glare, um, to cut one piece and I've used half of it on that box and I've got the other half, I just chopped it with my steps down the middle, um, to put onto the next box. And I have Use the same piece of designer series paper from Fancy Floral. There are loads to choose from. Again, retiring soon. Um, this I've chopped up into these pieces here to put onto my box. And you'll get all the measurements in my blog post. A link to that in the description below. If you're looking for more um, fancy floral inspiration, I'll also add a link to the blog hop in the description. So you can check that out too. Right, I'm going to bring in my Simply Scored. And this piece of card measures eight and three quarter inches by six and three quarter inches. And on the long side, I want to score that at three quarters of an inch, at four inches, four and three quarters, and at eight inches. Okay, turn that around, and on the short side, score that at three quarters of an inch, then at two and three quarters, and then at six inches. All right, so we actually need to do a little bit of extra cutting and I'm going to bring a paper trimmer in for that. Now we've got a short panel at the bottom and a larger panel at the top okay and we've got this dissecting line here i want to cut this line from the edge just to there okay and to make sure that i've got that at the right place 
I've got my larger panel um, to the left and I'm lining that up at four inches. Okay. And then I'm taking my cutting blade and I'm only going to take it down to four inches. Okay. And if you're a wee bit wary, you can just take it up and check. And then I'm going to take it from the score line down as well. And I've not gone quite far enough there. And just do a little bit more until I know that I've got it just at those two score lines. Okay? Now, this piece here will form the base of the box and this bit here will form the top. But because we've gone rectangular and not square, I need to do another bit of chopping. So let's fold that out of the way and this time line up that same edge. So this is the larger section at the top. Line up that edge at two inches. Well, in fact, I want to do it just under two inches. Okay, and cut that off. And we've got a bit spare. And I want to do the same with this bit. So I'm turning it around and I'll use the bottom of my trimmer to line up, if I had enough room on my desk, there we go, to line that up at two, just under two inches, okay? So I've gone a sixteenth of an inch under and take that down there. All right, so we've got two pieces that we do not need. Now, The eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that I've got a really scruffy edge there. Um, I use a really old, it's hardly got any um, filing <laughs> uh, left on it, just to run along that edge and take that off. That way I can continue to use my blades a little bit longer before I replace them. Okay, so a little bit on there. I'm doing this on the inside. Nobody's going to see it. I'm just using that to tidy up those rough edges. Okay, so. We now have this piece. Still got a bit rough there, I missed that bit. We now have this piece and we need to do a little bit of chopping. Okay, so you've got that centre panel there and this is your hinge. Okay. I want to cut that little square in the middle. So I'm cutting straight up either side and then chopping into it like so. Right, take those little bits out. Okay, then turn it around and do exactly the same on that middle square there. again so I can keep myself right because this is the base and this is the lid here. So I need to take out this corner here. Okay, so just straight along those there. 
and I need to just wedge this one the same as I did with the middle one. So straight up, little wedge, little wedge. Okay. I'm going to fold this around, so I'm going to take just a tiny little wedge off there. This bit is going to be our tab for joining. So just a little wedge off there. And similarly, this one, just a little wedge on there. Okay, and that way I know which one's which. Okay, so again, back to how we had it at the start. We've got a nice, neat rectangle there and there and there. These two are wedged and those squares are wedged, that one taken off, okay? So that's how it should look right now. I'm going to leave my decorating until I've built it. You could put your designer series paper onto these pieces um, just now, if you wish to. Right, I'm going to bring in my bone folder because I haven't actually given these a good crease. So just... folded them rather than burnished. Okay. Make sure I get them all. And again, you could do that before you do your cutting. If you wish. I normally do. But there's so many bits of cutting to remember, I thought I'd better just get on with it. <laughs> to building. Forming the base first. Okay, we've got that tab at the side. So I want to put some glue on this. Like that. And then I am folding that over. Like so. Give that a good press. Then I'm going to fold. So I want my hinge to be at that side. So this is the back piece. I'm going to fold the back piece in. And then I'm going to add glue to those two little tabs. Fold them around and then add glue to this piece and fold that around as well. Okay, so I can then use my bone folder to make sure that that's all sticking together. So we've got that nice, neat base there. I've got a slight overhang on that edge that might annoy me. Just depends how you trim your card. Right, so that's the base. This bit now just pops over and again, this is my front, so I'll take the front out of the way. I'll bring the back round and add some glue to the centre of that. And put that in place. Now, normally I would add glue there, but I've taken a little wedge off there so that it's not quite so bulky. And I don't want that glue to stick to there. So I'm actually going to add my glue here. 
and then fold that over like so. Okay, so I have my box. And now I'll have to try and get it open again. <laughs> like that. All right, so then I can just go in with the bone folder and just make sure that that's all pressed down together. Okay. We can decorate. I will die cut those and that for the front, but we've got two pieces of designer series paper, one for the front of the lid and one for the back. I'm going with the less decorated for the front. Um, because I'm going to add flowers onto it and I'll put the more decorated bit on the back. Okay, so the, these pieces are just marginally smaller than the actual box. As I said, all the measurements for these pieces of paper will be in my blog post. There's a link to that in the description for this video. So we've got that little one there as well. Okay. I've not gone right to the corner with my glue. As I said, I got to this peak, this stage and I thought mm, it would be quite nice to have a little message on there. So, obviously if I tried to stamp my message on there, it wouldn't work. A, is this a D? Yeah, a D block to the rescue. Pop that in there. Okay. It's just a bit shorter, but it's long enough for my stamp that up. I couldn't be happier to have you as a friend and then stamp that on. Lovely. And I just added a wee bit of flower in that corner and up on here and then try and get your block out without getting yourself covered in ink. Okay, so we've got that little stamped message on the inside now. I've still got a piece of designer series paper I've forgotten to put on. Oops. The top piece. two pieces left. I'm going to put one on there. Just, just the outside of the hinged part. And I need to add that little bit of ribbon to make the box so much easier to open. So using yet another retiring product, this crinkled 
seam binding ribbon, which I absolutely love and will definitely miss. A little bit of tear and tape. Put that on at one end. Like so. Then try and get that backing off. Oh, easy. Then decide what sort of length you want your loop to be. Fiddly. And then stick that down. Okay, so I've just got a small loop like that. Okay, so I can chop off that excess there. And then just a little bit of tin tape on here. Take the backing of that. And then add my little loop. Right down at the bottom there. Centered might be nice. Okay, and then I can cover that up with that remaining piece of designer series paper. And there we go. Just needs a little bit of decoration. And bring in my original one. Decanting some um, liquid glue, my Tombow, into one of these little bottles does make life a little bit easier. Um, Try and get some at the ends again. But the dots are great for giving you a bit more space to add a bit of glue. Come on. You know you want to. Oh, come on. Another one here. Hopefully it'll work. I've got a whole stack of these little bottles now because uh, we've been using this dye in classes last month. Oh, come on. I'm just going to go with it. Just going to go with it. Um, and it was just less mess for everybody if we used a little bottle of glue with these dyes. Okay, so I'm going to add my flowers on top and my flowers and leaves on top anyway, so it's not such a big deal. Right, let me just quickly die cut those. didn't do that part in advance in case I lost them. <laughs> right. and, oh, glue's not playing. Right, so I'm going to pop a leaf on there. That will help those bits stick down. I didn't get any glue on. 
and then my flower on top like so so there we go we've got two little boxes with a fun opening and closure perfect size for two little tea light candles although i'm sure there's lots of little things that you could put in a box like that I hope you've enjoyed seeing today's tutorial. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. And if you've got time, leave me a comment. I love to read them. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love for you to click on that subscribe button and the bell and get notification the next time I upload a tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next time, take care. Bye bye.